ਜਸ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਦੇਖਦੇ ਹੋਏ ਸਾਰੇ ਦਰਸ਼ਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਮੇਰੇ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਪਿਆਰ ਭਰੀ ਸਤਿ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਅੱਜ ਦਾ ਮੁੱਦਾ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਮੈਂ ਤੁਹਾਡੀ ਹੋਸਟ ਆਸ਼ਮਿਤਾ ਸਾਰੇ ਨੂੰ ਸ਼ਾਮ ਦੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇੱਕ ਵਾਰੀ ਫਿਰ ਨਿੱਘਾ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਆਈ ਹੈਵ ਅ ਵੈਰੀ ਇੰਟਰਸਟਿੰਗ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਟੂ ਸ਼ੇਅਰ ਵਿਦ ਯੂ ਜੋ ਕਿ ਜਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਲਰੇਡੀ ਥੋੜਾ ਜਿਹਾ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਦੱਸ ਚੁੱਕੇ ਆ ਕਿ ਇੱਕ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਇੱਕ ਮਾਈਨੋਰਿਟੀ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਕਿੰਨੀ ਪਾਵਰ ਹੋਲਡ ਕਰਦੀ ਹੈ ਇਨ ਮਾਈਨੋਰਿਟੀ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀਜ਼ ਨੂੰ ਸਟੱਡੀ ਕਰਨਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਜ਼ਰੂਰੀ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਐਂਡ ਸਾਡੀ ਇੱਕ ਰੀਸੈਂਟ ਇਵੈਂਟ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਅਸੀਂ ਇੱਕ ਇਹੋ ਜੀ ਹੀ ਆਰਗੇਨਾਈਜੇਸ਼ਨ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਮਿਲਦੇ ਆ ਜੋ ਕਿ ਏਜਨ ਅਮਰੀਕਨ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀਜ਼ ਨੂੰ ਸਟੱਡੀ ਕਰਦੀ ਹੈ ਤਾਂ ਕਿ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਦੇਖਿਆ ਜਾਏ ਆਮ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਜਾਣਕਾਰੀ ਖਾਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਪੋਲਿਟੀਕਲ ਵੋਟਿੰਗ ਸਿਨੈਰੀਓਜ਼ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਟੱਡੀ ਕੀਤੀ ਜਾਏ ਆਮ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਇੰਪੈਕਟ ਸਮਝਿਆ ਜਾਏ ਸੋ ਇਸ ਆਰਗੇਨਾਈਜੇਸ਼ਨ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਵੀ ਮਿਲਦੇ ਆ ਸੋ ਅਸੀਂ ਕੁਝ ਵੱਡੀ ਡਿਵੈਲਪਿੰਗ ਇੰਟਰਨੈਸ਼ਨਲ ਖਬਰਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਹਾਲ ਸ਼ੇਅਰ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਸੀ Uh, of course i want to bring the conversation back home uh, locally domestically jado si asian american community wal vekhde ha eh ek vaddi hui community hai gi jada influence vad reha hai um agar assi is election de vich uh, global uh, issues nu vekhiye te arab american community ek bahut vadda um tusi keh lo ek bahut vaddi power hold kardi hai is election nu determine karan le because of the specifics of their location ke kis tarah arab american communities midwest the un kuch battleground states de vich kinni vaddi ginti de vich rehnde han but overall asian american community nu study karan layi um ek official uh, sanstha uh, ek official organization jo ki proper methodology scientific tarike de naal is community nu study kar rahi hai surveys kardi hai una di wants needs pain points and political powers nu address kardi hai taaki um jadon assi media de vich ya koi politician apni campaign strategy de vich is community nu vekh ke unna nu pata hoye ke eh kin cheezan bare care karde han kin cheezan de naal eh motivate hunde han kin areas de vich inna nu load hai resources di ek eh ho ji sansa di asian american institute for research and engagement jo ke ithe new york de vich locally founded hai studies and does exactly that kind of work um recently as you know the event they gaye jithe unna ne ek landmark survey um release kita data release kita asian americans jo ke urban areas to bahar rehnde han right so sanu sareyan nu pata hai ke jadon eho ji studies conduct kitiyan jandiyan han khas karke minority communities nu leke oh zyada shaharan de vich hundiyan because utthe zyada ginti paayi jandi hai but this is the first of its kind jo ke shahara to bahar um jo middle class uh, asian american communities han ohna nu study karde hai is very interesting stuff so chalde hain is event te air organization uh, founded and managed by farah mozwala of new york um and ohna di event te kon kon maujood si ki data present kita gaya ohde bare sunde hain well good morning uh, my name is larry levy i uh, am an associate vice president at hofstra and I am executive dean of uh, the National Center for Suburban Studies at Hofstra University. And my primary role today uh, is to welcome you to Hofstra on behalf of President Susan Poser and Provost Charlie Reardon, people I work for, people who sign my paychecks. And of course, we know all deference must be due to that. Uh, one of the things that, um, and, and one of the things that, uh, it, one of the points i'd like to make which is really related to what's happening in this room is that hofstra and its new leadership its new strategic plan is determined to devote more of its research more of its resources to the communities around campus that we do spend a lot of time developing courses and producing terrific students who go on to become leaders but there's a realization that we must do more beyond our campus fence and partnerships with AAIRE which if it didn't exist somebody would have to invent it but far already did uh partnerships like this are at the core of what we hope to do and what we will continue to do the national center for suburban studies is a academic research institution that uh is dedicated to exploring suburbia's problems and its promise and one of the most promising developments of the suburbs is the asian american population 
It is not just the fastest growing cohort on Long Island. It is not only the one that is helping to drive our economy more than any other group, but ironically, shamefully, it is also one of the populations that in this generation is facing enormous issues in terms of hate and other obstacles that this research today focuses on. Things that affect the quality of life, language barriers that impact ability to access emergency services, education, economic opportunity. AIRE partnered with us, with the Hofstra Center for Suburban Studies, to begin to explore that. And I hope it's only the first of, of many partnerships. I did want to recognize, you'll, you'll talk about your team, uh, the people at Hofstra who pro bono uh, stepped up to work on this. Chris Neat, who you'll be hearing a lot from later, our academic director, who is the, is, is the academic heart and soul of, of the institute. I, I get my picture on the book. There are people who really do the work. Uh, Debbie Tinarello, our associate dean, she has a new title. I haven't even remembered it yet. But she is an essential part of, of the center. Uh, Andrea Alt-Brutus from the School of uh, Health Sciences, who couldn't be here today for a family matter, had a lot to do with the planning of, of the program. Uh, and two students, Kashmir Appendi, there, a senior, and Hafsa Munawar, a junior. So, where are you? Oh, she had to leave. Oh, she had to leave. I'm sorry about that. Um, only one thing I wanted to mention, a little bit of self-centered self-servingness. On November 19th, directly related to our ability to do work like this, is the celebration of suburban diversity, which a lot of you in this room have attended. And I hope that you will attend and you will support because it's the funds raised from this that enables us to be able to do this kind of work to be able to empower people like Farrow and her mission in ways that we otherwise could not. So the work we're doing today and that AIR has been doing for the past two years has been groundbreaking. You'll see in front of you our impact report, which uh, Laura and TJ will be talking about. But this is what AIR is about. The Asian community on the island is one of the fastest growing communities on the island. Is this, the Asian community of Africa is the fastest growing community. Where we have exponentially grown 150% over the past 10 years. We're about 13% of the population in Nassau County, 7% of the population in Suffolk County. If you look at the school districts and the population in those districts, some of the schools like Jericho and some other of these schools, their first grade, second grade, kindergarten, their classes are 90% Asian American. So this is a population growing the fastest, yet there's no foundation for this community. There's no organizations uh, that have advocacy for these communities as a united front. And that's what AIR is about. We are here to present data, numbers, to tell the story of our communities so that we can create coalitions, be unified, and then advocate for policy changes. And the research that we've done today, uh, for the last past two years that we're going to be presenting findings today, that research is on language access. And I don't think there's ever been a study on the island focusing on the API community in terms of language access. And the numbers that we found are disturbing, and they're, they're going to be instrumental in creating change for our communities. Because no one is going to be able to sleep under the, rock, the, the things in our communities anymore. We will be the ones advocating for our communities. We'll be working with other organizations to work together and unite. And that's the most important thing. Today, and any one of our air events, if you look, there's so much diversity. Because we have to work in unison together. To work with other communities, work with different Asian communities, work with people who are like-minded like us and want to see Nassau County and Suffolk County be inclusive and diverse. So that is our main uh, focus for AIR. Uh, outside, we have a voter registration table. If you have not registered to vote, uh, I don't care what your party is, just register to vote because that's really important. That's extremely important for us to have you register to vote. Um, I would like now, because I know uh, one of our main supporters has to leave, so I would like uh, Rizwan Qureshi from HAV Bank 
to just say a couple of words uh, about the support that he's given us and how he's been instrumental to air. It's so nice to see so many old friends. Uh, and uh, thanks to Farah and to Air for bringing us all together this beautiful morning. Um, and a special thanks to Larry Levy, who is Dean of the Hofstra Suburban Studies Program, who does a fantastic job. And uh, I would encourage you to check out the diversity dinner that he does. It's really fun and interesting. So, so thanks. Um, so the AIR stands for Asian American Institute for Research and Engagement. And those last two words, research and engagement, are really important and a, two very big parts of the mission. And so I just, you know, you have the sheet in front of you, so I'm not going to read everything. I just want to give you some of the highlights, if you don't feel like reading it or if you leave it here for whatever reason. Uh, so it's the nitty gritty, the facts, it's data driven, uh, facts and figures, and it's impressive when you think about all the work that Farah and her team has done over the past just two and a half years. This started in early 2022. Uh, it includes the work I'm talking about now, helping secure a half million dollars in funding for Asian nonprofits. And if anyone here is in the nonprofit community, you know how difficult it is to raise money. So that's quite impressive. And these are groups, nonprofit groups, that do need a lot of help, especially, as Farah noted, the population is growing faster than any other population here on Long Island. Uh, it's also a go-to trusted source for reporters, and I know we have some reporters in the room. AIR has been quoted more than 50 times in various media outlets. You know, yes, Newsday and Channel 12 here on Long Island, but also papers like the New York Times. You know, she's in people's Rolodex, if they even have Rolodexes anymore, but in their contacts, reporters' contacts. And that's as this population grows, there will be more press, there will be more stories and more of a desire for experts to speak on the subject. So that's, that's a really important way to get the name out as well. Uh, there's also, you know, as part of lobbying, to meet a lot of meeting with elected officials and that sort of thing. I'm fair, I can talk about that more, but I know it's dozens and dozens of officials from, you know, village government to Congress have been engaged by AIR. Education is a big piece of it. AIR has educated more than 800 teachers statewide on cultural understanding of our growing Asian population and talking about difficult issues like Islamophobia and anti-Asian hate. And I think we, you know, we're seeing some of the benefits of that, especially in this, in this difficult time right now. Uh, a big topic is language access and the education with the teachers is also a big part of that, is making sure that teachers know how to handle language barriers, what resources are available for their students so that they can succeed. Uh, on a fun note, AIR has helped dozens of young people get internships, get that first foot in the door, so that's incredibly valuable as well. Uh, Farah and AIR is extending, in terms of engagement, a lot of the good work we did in county government, and that's helping real people navigate a Byzantine government here on Long Island between towns and villages. I mean, it's, it's, if you grew up, if you were born and grew up on Long Island, it's very confusing. So you can imagine if you're a newer arrival, you may have some language issues, maybe some trust issues when it comes to government. Uh, that's a really important function that AIR serves as well. And I know Farah really well. If she gets a phone call, somebody has a problem, she'll do whatever she can to help them. She'll pull whatever strings she needs to do to help get people the, the services uh, that they deserve and that they have every right to. Uh, so that is pretty much what I, my part of, of the talk. You can look for all of the information. But, you know, my point is AIR is very open. We talk about the Asian community here on Long Island and in the country. I mean, it's incredibly diverse. So many backgrounds. You can't lump Asians. As I look around the room, I see that into one category. But uh, Farah and the approach of AIR is to be very open-minded, to be very warm and welcoming, to do the research, to get the data, the surveys, et cetera, but also to engage and to help people where they are. And so I want to thank all of you for being here and for supporting this mission. If you find this valuable and helpful, I would, I would also ask that you check the QR code. You can donate any amount that you would like. It's incredibly helpful. And uh, she's, she's, she runs a great nonprofit. I know it's not easy. 
And I'm just so proud of, of AIR and the work that Vera does. And a special shout out to our honoree. I know it's a, a little early, but Betty Leong is our honoree. You'll hear more about Betty in a little bit. But I just have to say, as you know, having been in government in the past, Betty is a force to be reckoned with. She is everywhere. She's talk about a Rolodex. She is not shy to advocate for her community. And I'm really happy that she's being honored today. Thank you very much. So, to see we creo que kistana air the Asian American Institute for Research and Engagement Hofstra University the whole researchers the nal jurke Asian Americans jo ke sabar bin areas de vich rehnde han ohna utte jankari ikatthi kar rahe han in a very uh, methodological scientific way um eh data kis tarah istemal kita ja sakda hai and a word with farah moswala herself the ceo and founder of air um chalde ek bari fir wapas is event te to hear more about the data and more about this organization from farah good morning everyone my name is chris neat uh i'm academic director of the national center for suburban studies and i'm also a uh, chair of the sociology department here at hofstra uh I worked on the survey component of this uh of this project along with a team um that included uh Farah uh, from um uh, from Air as well as my colleagues uh, Larry Levy uh and Deb Tinarello from NCSS as well as uh Dr. Al Brutus from the School of Health Professions here at Hofstra. Uh the survey really tried to build upon the findings of the focus groups that you just heard described right so the focus groups they're you know small groups with you know with community organizations they they are already had a relationship with the survey component of the research was an attempt to kind of broaden out to ask some of those this the questions that had surfaced in the focus groups to a much broader um group of asian american respondents here on here on the island And so the the structure of the the survey was first we asked a number of questions about particular language barriers to to identify the language needs that were were most important and then we asked a series of demographic questions in an attempt to to distinguish between uh to find which groups um experienced the greatest barriers in barriers that were greater than than others. The language barriers uh section of the survey included several questions. First we asked respondents what languages were spoken at home. We asked about whether they had difficulty reading, writing, speaking or listening in English. Um and this is I want to flag this because it's a category that's going to come up several times in in the following slides. Of the uh the folks that we asked in uh of our respondents, about 60% of them said that they had some problem reading, writing, speaking or listening in English. After we corrected that figure for a kind of a uh, an overrepresentation of, of folks who had been born outside the United States, the figure was closer to 50, right? So about half of our respondents had some trouble with one of these one of these types of communication. About a quarter of our respondents did not have problems communicating personally, but had someone in their family who had issues communicating in English, and then the final quarter had neither personal problems nor um nor and nor did their family members have problems communicating. We then asked people those who who had said that either they or their family had uh problems communicating whether they had ha- access difficulty accessing services such as healthcare, police and fire, education, government services and so on. Some of the the same uh the same problems that again had emerged from our discussions in the focus group. We asked whether um uh the respondents or their family members had previously used an interpreter to get a sense of the potential gap between the need for interpretation services and the actual use of those services. We asked whether uh voting was accessible, whether language barriers had prevented respondents from um understanding elections and participating in the electoral process. And then finally we asked about the experience of discrimination, which as Kashmir just said had emerged as a uh, a priority in those in those focus groups had been identified as a key problem. In terms of the demographic questions, we asked about age, gender, ethnic background, um year of arrival in the United States, citizenship, level of education, employment status, business ownership and place of residence. And for anyone to respond to the survey there were a couple of basic requirements they had to be 18 years old 
They had to be a Long Island resident. They had to identify as Asian American, and they had to agree to the consent form that was attached to the survey. The respondents were informed that their participation was voluntary and anonymous. Uh, we, we distributed the survey in two ways. First, we sent out a link to an online Qualtrics survey, um, but we also, uh, working, with, working with AIR, distributed the survey in physical and printed copies, which was especially important for uh, populations that had difficulty uh, reading, write, reading and, and writing in English. Um, and those printed versions were administered with the assistance of interpreters. I want to welcome everyone to a very special event. When we talk about the power of Asian American voices, that power is only as strong as the data behind it. And the organization Asian American Institute for Research and Engagement has put out a set of data that does exactly that, gives power to Asian American voices all around Long Island as well as in the United States. I'm now joined by CEO and founder Farah Mozwala. Farah, first of all, what an amazing person program. Um, we just sat through a couple of hours of presentation around the data, the survey methodology, and most importantly, how this is going to be used to change public policy to have a real world impact. In addition to, of course, this organization, which you started, I want to start there as well. Tell us a little bit about what motivated you to found AIR and what its mission has been in the years that you've been active running this organization. Thank you so much. What motivated me to found AIR was that the Asian American Institute, when I was thinking about what types of discrimination our communities face, I saw that there was no real uh, numbers to tell our story. So people can say, oh, uh, you know, we were facing discrimination. We have language access barriers. Our seniors don't get their services. But there was no concrete numbers to provide to government officials, to change makers, to actually advocate for our communities. Because usually Asian communities, they think of us as, uh, you know, that mi model minority myth where they assume that, oh, they're okay. They don't need the help. They don't need the services. So really what we're doing is we're dispelling that myth by providing numbers to tell our story. And the numbers offer such a clear picture of some of the drawbacks that the Asian community faces in simple things of accessibility, um, whether it's voting, whether it's healthcare, whether it's emergency services. These are all areas that even though rights guarantee that we should be able to access these, these communities aren't able to do so. Tell us a little bit about the survey and the data that was presented today. Asian American Voices on Long Island specifically, you worked with a lot of great partner institutions, um, researchers, individuals here at Hofstra University as well as others. Um, so tell us about the team and the kind of data that you hoped to put together and then present. So this data is a scientific research project. It is a two-year project. It's bulletproof. We've weighted the data. We've made sure to try to take out any variables possible. Uh, we first focused on uh, three focus groups where we discussed uh, the di different questions and the themes that we were planning to present in our survey. Once we finished the focus groups, we administered the survey for six weeks in field. That survey was done uh, either in person or via digital survey on Qualtrics. Uh, the survey was translated. We had uh, interpreters for that survey. The the results of that survey were then weighted to make sure that there was uh, no uh, you know, discrepancies and that it was accurate. And the numbers were astonishing. Uh, when you look at the census, a lot of our demographic information was very similar to the census, so we knew we were on the right track. The numbers in terms of uh, voter, uh, voter uh, information, in terms of uh, the usage of ethnic media, in terms of uh, just essential services and barriers to language access, we saw huge numbers. And those disparities, we're hoping, we're taking these numbers, we're going to take them to our elected officials and change makers and ask them to make policy changes to help our communities and support our communities. Um, Farah, I have to ask in closing, you mentioned ethnic media and you had a whole section uh, in your survey, in your data collection that focused on how these communities, these Asian American communities that are so varied, so diverse, they're not one monolithic block, um, how they consume content and information, especially when it comes to political campaigns. I'd love to get a comment from you on the importance of ethnic media as well as mainstream media when Communities of color, specifically Asian American communities, sometimes struggle with English as a language in general. So with 
communities of color, and especially immigrant communities, a lot of them are in their silos, and they they uh, speak to only themselves, their communities, and they use ethnic media as their main focus of uh, information, gathering information. They use these ethnic medias, they watch them, they uh, follow them on WeChat or WhatsApp, so that's the place where they get most of their information. And this study proves that, that no one is watching uh, the mainstream, uh, as we think they are, especially if they're from immigrant communities, they're going to watch uh, uh, ethnic media that's in their language or has people that look like them speaking from their communities, their trusted ambassadors to the community. So that's important. And I think this study is showing the importance of ethnic media. It's showing the importance of translations uh, for campaign material. It's the importance of learning about voting. And, and those things are important. It's not that the communities don't care. They care, but they need the services and they need the uh, information in a way they feel comfortable with it, not the way that we're pushing on them. I'd love for you to speak directly to the audience here and tell them if they need to avail any of the resources. Um, AIR is doing so much for the community in terms of workshops, getting access to grant money for other nonprofits, getting folks registered to vote, especially helping folks um, and younger members of the community get internships, jobs, etc. If someone wants to reach out to AIR to avail any of these resources, um, where can they go and what kind of help do you provide? So if you just go to our website, we're at www.air.org. If you just go to our website, you can uh, fill out a form there and we can get in touch with you. We're on social media, on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and uh, LinkedIn. From there, we can contact you and you could uh, get on our mailing list to find out about the different workshops we have. We have a wonderful internship program for students that you can find out if you're living in the Long Island area. Uh, we also have uh, you know different coalitions that we're part of, so we can help you navigate through that. If you're in New York State, we can help you. Uh, if you're part of an organization, help you create those coalitions. Coalition. So please reach out to us. We would love to help and support you. Once again, Farah Mazwala, CEO and founder of AIR Asian American Institute for Research and Engagement. What a wonderful event. Congratulations Thank again. You. Thank you so much. So, to see what you Farah Mazwala, and other AIR team members, board members, um, this endeavor, which is mission, which is joined by them, and more importantly, it can be a long-term impact. Um, eh ho je jodo surveys agge ande han, uh, you know, agar tohan no bhi mokka milda hai na de vich hissa landa, juru lea karo, because once again, agar asi apne vare dasange nahi, kisi official taur te, kisi official capacity de vich, um, paami ho saadi elected officials hon, paami ho saadi media hoi, uh, saadi community hoi, kisi nu pata nahi hona ke na ke asi hai kon, but saadi needs, saadi wants, saadi pain points, and saadi political powers ki hai giyan. This election, they which minorities decide current that the next president can be elected. But if we don't know that the minorities are the ones who 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 are the Sade guests delay is uh, research the naal jure hui. Koi bhi questions, comments, concerns to see uh, jurur sound like sakdo info justbroadcasting.com. Ashmita at justbroadcasting.com. Hun sanu video ijazat. Satsrika.